introduction. So yeah, I'm really pleased to be here and see such a great turnout for the 20th anniversary of the designation. Um, as Paul mentioned, I'm the lead planner for the National Trails Office. And one of the things that I head up is feasibility studies. And so I thought this was a really great opportunity uh, playing off of Earl's presentation to kind of help people understand how the feasibility study process works and what it means to be a national historic trail and what it means to meet national significance. So national historic trails are a very unique piece, right? They're historical artifacts of a very special kind. It's not enough just to be a historic route, it's not enough to be just locally important, and it's not enough just to have somebody famous associated with it, right? It has to be a route of travel, and the people traveling on that route is why that route is important. It's what they're doing that makes it important. Right, so we're not going to designate something because President Jefferson went down that road, right? It has to be, what were they doing? What were they doing that contributed to the formation of our nation? So to date, Congress has only designated 19 national historic trails. And when we think about it, that's a very elite group. That's a very small group of trails, all the historic trails that are out there. And the Old Spanish was the 15th designated trail. So to qualify to be a National Historic Trail, there's three criteria, right? You have to meet all three criteria. Um, it has to be established, established by historic use and historically significant because of that use. So it can't just be um, a made-up route, right? Like connecting the dots in important places. It has to be a historically used route. Uh, it has to be of national significance in American history. And it has to have significant potential for public recreational value. And it's not just recreation, but recreational value tied to that historic significance so that people can get out there on the ground and appreciate the history while actively participating in the landscape. So the first criterion has to be a trail established by historic use, has to be historically significant, and we have to know where it is. It's kind of important, right? <laughs> So Old Spanish kind of, you know, uh, we love, I think our, our happiest pastime is arguing about the route of the Old Spanish Trail. Uh, <laughs> but we knew enough about it to be able to, to look at it and say, yes, this is a thing, and we can go forward and, and evaluate it further. It has to be the original, it has to be um, established by historic use and, and historically significant. So we're not doing connect the dots between stump springs and resting springs, right? It has to be an actual route between these important places. So the national significance statement that came out in the final feasibility study was that it's the first viable Euro-American overland route between Mexico's frontier provinces of New Mexico and California. And it provided that final link in the first overland trade network to span the North American and this is a really important point because it's this aspect of the of the Old Spanish Trail that made it nationally significant. And that's very difficult. It's a much deeper history than other national historic trails. Other national historic trails, it's very easy to see, like, oh, the gold rush, right? It's, it's a very obvious connection. So for Old Spanish, you have to dig a little bit deeper. You have to go a little bit farther back into our history to appreciate how the West was formed and how the politics influenced the interaction between the United States government and the Mexican government and what eventually became part of the United States. So while the trail was used before and after uh, 1829 and 1840, it's that 1829 to 1840 period that is what makes it nationally significant. So even though it was used after like the old Mormon road, et cetera, that's important, but that doesn't play into the national significance of the trail. Similarly, you know, other trails that made up the Old Spanish Trail and travelers before 1829, also important, but not important in terms of national significance for the United States. And of course, the third criteria, which I think Old Spanish has in spades, is the recreational potential. So this is something that Rob's going to kind of pick up on and, and carry forward after I get done, that the whole purpose of the National Trail System Act is to get the public out 
on the ground, recreating, appreciating their history, taking that in, making a physical and emotional connection. And so that is really important. And that is what Rob is going to discuss about how we can make that happen.